beautiful spot like this, it'll be packed before you know it. We are the first fleet. Yeah, not quite, mate. <laughs> As this year's Australia Day lamb ad humorously points out, this is a nation built not only on the sheep's back... My tyres arrived. Where'd you get those? This week. ..but also the backs of migrants. It's the Italians, the Greeks and the Serbians. Australia's gained enormously from immigrants. Almost 30% of us were born overseas and half of us have a parent who was born overseas. We are an immigrant nation. Along with a rich and diverse culture, immigration has also brought prosperity, playing a significant role in Australia's enviable economic growth story. The growth uh, through the year averaged 4.5%, which exceeded the forecast. The economy grew by a solid 0.5%. GDP grew by 0.8%. We are growing faster than every economy in the G7. Within months, Australia will pass an important milestone, dodging the recession bullet longer than any other country in modern times. Yes, we're about to beat the Netherlands for the longest run of growth without a recession, but we've been helped by the fact that we take more migrants uh, from the rest of the world than much of the rich world does. That doesn't necessarily mean, though, that the income that the household sector generates or the, the income per household is any higher than it would be otherwise under lower population growth. In other words, high immigration may help subsequent treasurers spruik the nation's headline growth rate, but at home you might be having a very different experience. Starting with the last recession 25 years ago, this graph shows the last quarter century of positive growth. But if you remove population growth, of which migration usually accounts for around half, it's quite a different story, dipping into or very close to negative growth or recession several times in the same period. The right mix of immigrants is also helping balance out problems with our ageing population. We can substantially offset that, not fully, uh, by getting migrants, in particular high skill young adult migrants are the, you know, the perfect combination. Running a high immigration program uh, supports the working age population uh, in the short run. It boosts the available supply of labour. But in the long run, everybody gets old, so it's, it's a little bit like kicking the can down the road. Economist Gareth Aird believes governments should consider more than just GDP growth when setting Australia's immigration targets. And I think policymakers should look at a range of things when assessing uh, what is that right level. They should take into account what's happening in the labour market, uh, what's happening, happening to the mix of skills of workers in the economy, what's happening with dwelling prices, what's happening to traffic congestion, and basically focusing on the lived experience of households. This brings us to the downside of high immigration, growing pains. It's a bad start to our roads, the Pacific Highway, as you're headed south. Many new migrants set up in the major capitals, closer to their loved ones and the potential jobs. That fuels the economy there, but also puts pressure on transport services and increases demand in the housing market, forcing prices upwards. It's not true to say that immigrants only have good effects. They have good effects and bad effects. Bigger is not better. You know, that is absolutely not the reason uh, for migration uh, to Australia. Yes, we're 24 million people on a continent uh, of opportunity and there is more of an argument for just bulking up in Australia than in almost any other rich nation. But if you want to raise living standards, you don't just get more people. What you do is get the right people. The number of migrants to Australia next year will jump to around 300,000, its highest level since the Immigration Department was created after World War II. Kevin Rudd, as Prime Minister, discovered the perils of advocating a big Australia. I actually believe in a big Australia. I make no apology for that. When Julia Gillard replaced him, she took a very different tack. And moving forward means moving forward with plans to build a sustainable Australia, not a big Australia. Today, with traffic jams and lack of affordable housing, two of the biggest complaints in our cities, calls for a cut to immigration are gaining traction. Our city roads have become parking lots, schools bursting at the seams. I call for a halt to further immigration and look after our aged, sick and helpless first. And that's off the planet. That's off the planet. No, no sensible government anywhere would, would do that. Uh, you know, so what we're really talking about is, I think, 
you know, is how big an adjustment down you might want to make. A recent essential poll found 57% in favour of cutting immigration to make housing more affordable. Just 28% disagreed. So what would happen if immigration was cut? It would actually be a relatively substantial hit. Would it help housing affordability? Yes. Would it help housing afford affordability much? No. Lowering the immigration rate ultimately lowers uh, the population growth rate of the economy, which means potential output or the rate the, the economy can expand out also falls. Uh, but that doesn't change uh, GDP per capita, uh, the output on a per person basis, and that's ultimately uh, what matters for the household lived experience. Our immigration program is, I see as the source of national strength. But to kind of give that advantage up, just to so we can take some pressure off housing prices, I, I find that kind of problematic. What seems clear is that to continue to run a successful high immigration program, all governments must do more to ease Australia's growing pains. Higher living standards requires more productive Australians and more productivity is not just you know, better technologies, it's braver politicians. And I think policy makers need to take some more longer term solutions and get a little bit more uh, imaginative uh, with the type of policy uh, reforms that we should see in the economy uh, that ultimately boost uh, long run living standards here in Australia.